So I won't be really doing user journeys for them. I won't lie. But things like user flows and personas, I find them like really, really important, right? Because they really, they're really going to help me as I am designing, especially user flows, like especially user flows. Because with user flow, I kind of like understand, I kind of like understand everything I am building, right? So user flow and personas is what I'll be explaining today. Information architecture too, we can discuss about that. Right, I would explain one or two. But those videos I sent to the group will really help you guys understand more so we can go into the practical side of things. All right, so what is a user journey? All right, so don't mix the terms together. We have user journey, we have user flow, right? User journey, journey. I mean, journey is pretty much understandable. Journey is, uh, do I even have to, let me, let me just go to my slides first. Um, all right, my presenter is ready. Start selection. Okay, so like I said, we'll be talking about user journey, what it is, why, and how you can do your user journey. Same goes for user flows, personas, information architecture. And what is a user journey? Right. A uh, user journey, like I said here, it provides an end-to-end -end view or experience a user in her, uh, it's A user journey provides an end-to-end -end view or experience of user's interaction with your product, your website, or application. So I'm going to give you a typical example so I can paint a picture for you, right? So let's say, let me see what's the next product. All right, now. I'm trying to explain what the difference between the user flow and user journey is for you guys. So let's say for me, it's project now that involves um, accessing uh, skilled and verified uh, phone pairs without having, without you having to come to get that to fix your device or anything, right? So if you're going to do user flow or user flow, user flow is basically the task you're going to perform inside that product, inside that app. Let's say you have to do user flow for when a user um, contacts or check price for a vendor that will fix iPhone screen, right? Everything the user does inside that app, starting from when he signed in, when he click on check a vendor, when he filter and whatever, everything it does within that platform is what we call a user flow. I will play that for that. Just get that. That's what we call the user flow. It's just a series of tasks a user performs to accomplish a goal while user journey is a much broader uh, flow than user flow user flow is inside user journey user journey begins even before the user interacts with the, the products so it could be something like um when the user phone falls or something let's say i'm going somewhere uh if somebody just hits my hand or something my phone falls on the ground right like oh my god you broke my screen ah well, you're going to pay for this screen oh i don't have money I'm going to share the money 50 50. Right. The user journey starts from there, right? Right before you, you right when the idea that, oh, I'm, I'm going to fix my phone, when the idea cross the user mind, it's when the user journey starts. So I'm going to call somebody and I don't really have time. I can't go to call, I can't go to Kedja now. Like, ah, I have to work tomorrow. Today's uh, Friday. If I don't fix it, I don't know what's going to happen and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, let me just use the uh, news app. With news app, I can just put the uh, um, skilled professionals that can help me fix my phone. Then I'll pick up the pick up the this thing. I would like I will I'll sign up, put my address. I would search the list of phone repairers and look, 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 look. I say, oh, let me see, Mister Toby. Mister Toby has five star rating on this app. He fixes iPhones specifically, and he has fixed about five thousand iPhones. I mean, for him to have five thousand five star ratings it means he's reliable right then i contact mr toby hey mr toby uh good afternoon uh please so this will happen my phone still broke for more chance and i need my phone asap um what can we do about it can you help me fix it mr toby says oh yes we can fix it that's over the chat uh what you have to do is send your phone through a dispatch we have our own personal dispatch that can help you come and collect your phone and blah 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 make payment and you send me your phone 
And when you're done, they bring back your phone for you and you are happy. That is the user journey. It takes you through the whole user journey, all the emotional roller coaster, all the ups and downs and everything. It takes you through, you try to understand the whole process of the user journey, right? That is the user journey. So now, like I said, so the user journey showcases the user emotions, how you are sad when your phone screen fell and broke, how you are angry and everything. The motivation, which is that, um, I don't really have time, or I don't have time to go to the and start fixing my phone. I need somebody I can trust. Okay, I see um, five star rating from Mr. Toby, and he has fixed 2,000 iPhones and everything like that. Okay, I think I can go with him. That's my motivation. The touch point. So it basically provides an insight of eye and nose of the user when interacting with the product. That is the user journey. And this is a typical example. Like I, like I said, I'm not actually telling you this, but like I said, I really don't do user journey for because I'm in building small scale product, right? I do user flows, right? So this is a user journey for an online retail app. This is an example. These are the different stages. Um, your awareness, research, download, register, browse, purchase, support. I'll go again. So awareness is that when you look at it, ah, I will have a dinner. I actually don't have any place that I'll be at. Like, ah, ah. And all this place, I haven't really been dinner gun. Like, I mean, it's going to list my date on Friday. Man, this is not cool, though. Where can I get? Then I pick up my phone. Please, do you know where I can get dinner gun? They can, I mean, send it to me. And I keep doing research, looking for the right retailer and everything. Oh, there is this app, um, Amanda's app, where you can go there and look at nice outfits, and you can download, and they will, they look at different affordable, whatever, whatever, whatever. Then you pick your phone, you download the app, right? Then you register, you browse through selection, you purchase, and I mean, that is that is that's where the, the clue ends for you, fine, right? Or it starts from the awareness phase where you look at oh. I don't have anything I can, I can wear, right? So now, so this user journey documents everything. The stage you were, your goal at that point, which is to, um, for a year, I said, carry things on the go. Me, I said, um, I have a dinner, I don't have a I can wear. So you find the retailer or find the shop that you can, you can download, so you can um, buy gown from. They recommended an app, download the app, register and everything. This way your goal. All your actions, you put the action down. What were the touch points? Uh, touch point is, I mean, you just check in your wardrobe. So that's you just your normal activities. You check your wardrobe, you can find anything. Your research, you ask friends, you I mean check Google and everything, you search for everything, download, you use App Store or Play Store. I mean, you get the point. This is your touch points, various touch points you do when you're trying to carry out each stage of this uh journey map. And how was your emotion? At first, you were, I mean, like, are you amazed or whatever? Like, oh my God, not kind of disappointed. But you were, I mean, you just discovered that you needed something. Like, oh, I might need a gown, right? And you started doing research, me, you are curious and everything. You found the solution, so you were a little bit elated. You the app that, oh, thank God, I can order from somewhere. Uh, you download the app, you're smiling, you register, you are browsing to collection, your, your eyes is wide open, looking for a beautiful one. You purchase your item and you are happy. So let's say they're disappointed, and that's your fluent, and um, you contact support, and they don't need support. I mean, you can become more back, but that's the idea. We talk about there are different pain points, right? Um, all these things are very, very like this is what makes you it's very interesting when you when you say you are designing a pro a product that is user centric meaning you put your users at the front and center of it you're not using your head to think of what the user might like so using things like journey map you actually have to they help you empathize with the user you really understand what's going on like it's not just beyond the icon of the app and everything you understand their their motivations their pain points like their emotions everything and this is how you use the journey map to understand all these things right so this is an example of a, a journey map i'll send this slide so you can look at it but I use I mean, no, it's, it's only a few times I have done like a journey map, everything, which is not good. I'm not saying this. Thing. I use user flows. So now, why do we use uh, user journey? I kind of explained this already. Why we use user journey? So by creating a user journey map, you are able to understand how user navigate your products and the challenges they might encounter along the way. 
So this way you're able to be more user inclined. I said that so when you are designing a product, you kind of put yourself in the users. You understand what's going on in their heads, their pains, and I mean everything that's going on in their heads. You understand. So mm -hmm. how do you create your user journey map? So the journey begins with your first user interaction or your interaction with a user, right? Or <clears throat> So let's assume you've carried out your research and everything. You, uh, you did an interview with somebody. You ask the person, like, okay, have you ever been at the point where you need to repair your phone and everything? What happened? The person starts narrating stories to you that, oh no, a particular deal, I was rushing to office. I mean, so we're trying to struggle for boss. Somebody just my phone and the phone fell and ah, my screen broke. And you are taking out of all these things during the user interview. Right, like, what did you do? I was so pissed. I told the guy, Oh, you're gonna fix my phone. And the guy was like, Oh, sorry, madam, I don't have any, I don't have money. I'm this and that. And I was so pissed, and there was no time. Like, the person's gonna narrate all the story. That's if you don't ask post question or like, um, Have you fixed one before? Yes, I mean, like, when you actually engage the person in a conversation, right? Like, to them, like, okay. Uh, you have been in a situation where what happened? How did you feel? I was angry. Um, I told the guy he must fix it too. Like I was about to look up with this for him, everything. But then I, I didn't have time and all, and I needed somewhere to fix my phone. So somebody recommended this app. So I just tried it out. I mean, at first I was skeptical, right? But me seeing Mr. Toby's rating, five star, five star, two thousand pounds. Is it even real? I went ahead. I read comments and everything. I searched on Twitter. Not passing about the app, and everybody's like, Oh, this app is uh, this app, the answer you fast. Right that's where I was standing. I called Mr. Toby and he sent the dispatch and he picked my phone. And I mean, they brought to the office for me. I'm so happy you have done this. So it's not like this thing you are coming, you're just bringing out from your head, you're not cooking from your head. It's as a result of what you've gotten from the search carried, right? Which is your interview. That's how you understand all these things. So from that research, you can now do a journey map. You understand the users just like this chart here. You understand what happens, you categorize them to stages. Okay. Uh phone broke. Um, she needed somebody, somebody recommended somebody, she downloaded the app, right? What were our what were our goal in each of these stages? What were the actions she took, the touch points, emotion, and everything? You understand it. Like I said, all these things should overwhelm you if you actually did an interview. Is if you do not do interview now, that's when you be like, what should I put here? Should I put here? But well, if you actually did an interview and you spoke to a real user, I mean, with no time, you fill up this um, journey map. So, having said, first of all, let me make sure you are following me here. Oh, Toba is here already. Okay, yes. I don't know when you joined us, but we have those resources that can help you. All right, so back to a user flow. This is the one I used to do. As a matter of fact, let me see if I can even share an example of a very one I did. Uh, let me see. It is loading. We use Fig Jam, by the way, so I'll be sure you get out to use Fig Jam. All right, I think this is one. Let me just share my screen. Let me just share this screen quickly. Uh, before I explain, share window on the right. So this is example of the user flow I did. It's supposed to be when the user selects a game or oh, view game selection, select the game, check if the widget is available. If the widget is available, you are either accept or reject. If you want, you can initiate a new one. If you get a new one, you can verify with your I mean, So this is example of the user flow. This is a very complex one because it's many, many tasks that user can carry out in this platform. So you can see that it's very, very big and long. With this, I understand what I'm building. It might be overwhelming at first, but with this, so me have a picture of what I'm supposed to design, how many pages I'm supposed to have on my platform. So it's, uh, yeah, let me show you know, with this example. Okay, so back to the class. All right, so a user flow or user flow. I mean, first of all, when you, when you hear the word flow, flow, flow just signifies movement. How things move, move from point A to B. 
right? Uh, from user, it's not even a flow chart or user flow chart. Uh, maybe you guys might know a flow chart where you have different shapes. Okay, so it connects to this, this connects to that. So user flow is just um, the part the user takes to accomplish a task in your product, right? So it's um, the part a user takes when using your product. It maps out every step a user must take from the first to the final interaction, right? Don't get it mistaken. A user journey, you are going to, your user journey is more broader than user flow. User journey, you understand since from the beginning when the person even is, I have had an idea that, okay, I might be, I might be needing a product, a, 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 this is my problem, right? And I think I need a solution. Right, right from that very moment is where your user journey starts from because you're trying to understand the user's motivation, right? But user flow are the uh, steps a user carries out inside the product. For example, I want to change it, I want to change my password. I want to create a flow for someone to change a password. You can't, I mean, to change a password, you need to be on the phone. So you click on my profile, you go to say, security or whatever, under security, you see change password. Change a new password and click on save. That's a simple flow. So you can do a flow on them um, how to send five million naira to Amanda. You open your GT Bank, you go to transaction or wherever you go to, input amount, send a copy of account number, you send put input pin, and you send the money, you save as beneficiary in case you want to send another five billion later. Right? That's a simple flow. Um so this is an example. Not a typical example of using it right because after this whole thing, we jump on Big Jam and we do practical of all this, right? <clears throat> so this is basically orbiting a user will do. So user go from year to year, we put camera app, upload image, upload image, success, you're done. If we if there's an error, you send error message, an error message. So there are shapes that have that we do use when creating the user flow. I will explain that in the next slide. So now, why a user flow? So user flows are critical for mapping out user parts through an app or website to complete a specific task. What I'm saying is that all these things, I assume we've done, we do talk about, um, we talk about doing competition now. Yes, we, I, I took this, so to talk about that, where I said um, doing auditing. Yes, yes, we talk about that. So. I mean, if you guys truly did your research, you guys should not be confused in this class, what I'm doing, you know, if you truly did your research. So now, <clears throat> for me, app, right? So me has downloaded Gigi, because Gigi is an indirect competitor. They don't fix phone, but they have similar to them. And you, you browse Gigi, check out Gigi works. Okay, so this is where Gigi lists out all the this thing. Okay, how do I, if I want to contact somebody, what do I do? You've checked out DG up and up and down. You will go online again, look for a platform that connects. Okay, you see one platform. Oh, but this one they don't work with people from private. They connect doctors to patients in real time. So download that app too. You check, 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 see how the thing works. You kind of understand how flows work and everything. So that when you are building your own, you don't I mean all these things are not magic there. Yeah. That is why UX eh? I don't know. Some people call them who are debating it if UI UX is a creative field or if it is um if whether, it's, whether it is okay, whether design UI design is art or not, right? Because UI design, there's nothing like oh, you are just free to do something like that. Things have to be done purposefully, right? You have to put your users at the front and center. You have to actually do research to know all these things. If you don't do research, you don't know what to do with your user flow. If you don't do research, you cannot do user journey map. Like if you do not do all this and you can't do this. You just be building a product on your own. I mean, so back to what I'm um what a notification what was that so bar is designed all right um uh, coach good evening yeah good evening sorry for cutting you short i just wanted to be like okay in i feel in the addition to what you're saying so i guess this user flow is more like you can't there, there won't be any water flow with that or why i think that um user flow so in user flow you can do a simple user flow with shapes and you can do a more advanced user flow with wireframes it's your choice i 
Like me, I don't okay. see the point of using my wireframe because if I use my ship, I understand what I want. But some people do recommend that you do I use wireframe. I mean, like I don't you get so the idea is just to understand every step that a user would take to complete a task. Okay, thank you. All right, so <clears throat> moving forward. By the way, I like the Google um Google Meet UX. They just know that because I'm on this page, I cannot see what's happening. So when you raise up your hand, I hear the notification like hey, it's a weird beep. I noticed that something went wrong. Like it's different from when someone joins a meeting or when someone leaves a meeting. It's a very unique sound. That's what got my attention. That's UX for you. Very interesting. Do research and find out all those things. Anyways, so I said these flows are critical for understanding the user's journey from their first interaction to the final action. So a user flow is inside a user journey. It's part of the user journey. It's not user journey. They're not the same thing, right? Um, user flow, um, uh, journey you take inside the platform. Why user? Why user flow is? It starts from like outside. It might even end outside. Like it shows that okay, when you put on your gown to the wedding or whatever, what user flow is for task within the app. Take note of that. So a user flow is part of the user journey. So. How do you create a user flow? All these things will be practical so you understand better. And if you want to understand the definition, go to those um, resources I sent. It will help you understand them too better. So how do you create your user flow? First of all, like I said, as you've done your own assignment, you understand your users. You know who are using this, who are using this product, who are those using this product. First of all, who are my target users? Right, what are their goals? What would they like to achieve? What's the problem? First of all, because you know your goals, you need to know their problem. If in their problem, you can tell what their goals are. Okay, so I would like to order a dress, right? Because I don't have a dress. Um, I would like to fix my phone, for example. Um, so now with all these things, you look at okay, what are the possible steps that these users might take to let's say you get a repairer, right, within the app. And you begin to map out the flow, the map out and visualize the flow as you do that. We'll do an example. Um, now, there are some of the elements you use in creating user flow. Um, that user flow I sent you, that I showed you quickly, I use simple shapes for it. Right? But they are, start, they are, they are you know, should I call it standard practice? In as long as you understand what you're doing, it's fine. Right? But they are practices people follow because each shape means something. Right? So we have circle, circle that signifies. A start point or an end point. It just use the beginning of the flow and the end of the flow. That is what circle is for. A uh, rectangle represents screen or pages within the product or service. So, example, would be like home page, sign up page, checkout page. Diamond represents decisions. So, it's a point where you user have to make decisions. So, things like, um, have you logged in? Yes or no? I mean, like, have the user logged in? You put a a a type, let me call it type or diamond, right? So have the user logged in. If it is yes, they go this way. If it is no, they go this way. So whenever you have a decision, first of all, I'm going to go to pink jam and we'll be practical. So don't get confused. Um when a user has decision to make, right? They use this um diamond to represent that. Then arrows is what is showing the flow, the connection, the movement, where the direction of the movement, right? It's going from up to down and stuff like that. Just like the example I gave you. But this is not a good example. It will be practical because this one, they kept it simple. This place you see user is supposed to be the start, but that is black. It's supposed to be the start. Um, upload image is, it's not even like, this is not a, a, a good example. It will be practical and you understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying there's no right or wrong way to do it or like whatever makes you I'm not saying that it's wrong as far you cannot get what you want with this. I'm saying it's wrong as far what I'm explaining, like maybe a more standard practice if you're trying to use the shapes as per what they mean. I hope you get me. So it's not like it's wrong and you will not get what you want. <laughs> okay, how oh, should I talk about persona first? Let's opt on, let's go to feature and first. So Oh, I stopped sharing. That's not what I was supposed to do. Share window. 
So I come to my own page, right? This is my own page. Um, I want to create a new document. I want to create a new document. So if you look at this stuff here, can either create a file, a new design file, or I can create a thick jam board. You get that? I can either create a new design file or I can create a thick jam board. What I need is thick jam. Thick jam. I don't know what thick jam means, but it's what I will use for my user flow. So thick jam did. They have an AI now. That I mean, they have an AI now. Let me just type something on this AI. Generate a simple login user flow. This AI probably gonna give me rubbish. Let me try this. Okay, good, 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 good. All right. So can you see that AI? AI wants to come and take this job, but <clears throat> all right. So let me do that shit for you. Let me do them somewhere here. I'll show you how to do, how to use fit my edit. So down here, I where you have all the tools you'll be using. Down here is where you'll be having all the tools you'll be using. Um, wait, my guys following me. Let me know you're following me. If you're following me, please signify. All right, Amanda. Good, 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 good. All right, so um, this place is where you have all the tools you'll be using. Here is your normal pick tool or select tool where you can use your select whatever you want to use. Down here is your hand tool or panning tool. I call it pan, I think. I don't know which I call it pan tool. But if you know shortcuts, like I said, if space bar is what you use to pan. I never click on all this, I just click on press space bar and I move around. Right. The next one is your marker, which I've never used for anything. Okay, this is what marker work for. I really don't use marker. And you have different type of marker you can choose. Oh, so there's a lot. I can just do this. <laughs> Interesting. I see if you blast it on the file. Okay. Then you have your eraser tool and whatever this thing is for. The next is sticky note. So you know what a sticky note is or post it. I don't know whatever you know it as. If you want to drop a message for somebody instead of a comment, said uh, we will. Come back, back to address. The idea is that Figma is a very collaborative tool. They expect people to come together to work. So all these things that will help you collaborate better. That is why they have all these things like this. Here are your shapes, the different shape you are using. And if you see it, you have the fundamental four I explained. You have your circle that represents start or finish. You have your square or rectangle that represents you have a square that represents a page. You have your um, not triangle. You have your triangle. I say triangle, diamond rather. That represents decision. Then you have your line, which is your connecting line. So this is what they did here. This is a very good example. Well, AI is giving us um, square. So we're going to change that. When I click on this, this is me coming down here. You see this thing that come up. This is where I can use to, um, to edit stuff. You can see it here. So when I click on it, it pops up. So I can change the shape to second. Is a start point for me. Now the start point is the next time is a page, which is a login page that says enter username and enter your password. So the direction is like this. Why is this one coming back here? Okay. All right. Good. 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 So now the next one is a uh, credential value. Let me delete this. I will draw it back myself and make this one straight. So now this is a decision for um, what we are trying to build. Are your credential valid, which is like your login details or the username you put, did it match what you're supposed to put? If it is yes, your login is successful. If it is no, you display an error message. So the only thing you can do from here is to come back to login again. That is why we have the shape like this. You to so start enter username and password and your valid uh, your credential valid yes login is successful as login is successful user enter account perform desired action um 
Is is that logged out? Yes. Then you end. I will do my own from scratch. I just want to show you guys a rough piston, right? Um, is is that logged out? You go back. So now let me do something from scratch, pertaining to our product we are building, which is e bomb folks. I want to build a user flow so you understand. Um, so give me a minute. Let me pull up my my design brief and my let me pull up my design brief quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, sorry. Just give me a moment, please. So now, because I have done my um competitive analysis right so my computer analysis i've seen what other people have done right so i can pick out some of the flows some of the some of the tasks my user want to carry out according to my design brief i know that my users are going to be registering on the platform so let me type some of the goals that my users will be doing um so to get text true right now i said everything is here to get your type to you can see a ta right ta is where you get your text to so when I come here, I can type, increase the size, so everybody can see it. So we have a registration flow. <clears throat> registration space is log, log, sign in slash sign up. Let me waste too much time. Sign in slash sign up. The next we have um because you have to browse your menu for example right you have to browse your menu browse menu so before you know all this thing you have to do your research because i know what i'm doing like if you do your research it shouldn't be a problem another flow will be ordering a food flow ordering a yeah, ordering a food you can call it ordering or placing or subscribing subscribing to a meal a meal plan um okay tracking your delivery so tracking your delivery so that task for my user carry out again mm, maybe we can say subscription management in case you want to cancel your subscription subscription management so these are some of the tasks like my users will be um these are some of the subscription my users will be carrying out on my app and i've checked global i've seen how the flow works and everything so at first my start point so i'm going to draw a circle i'm going to draw a circle if i draw a circle here can you all see my screen let me please be following you let me come to Okay, good. No, don't don't get lost. Um, don't get lost. Don't get lost. It's good, good, good. All right. So I'm gonna draw my circle, which is my start point.
I'm sorry if you're in was for the class and I checked my window. All right. This is my start point. Let me increase the size to make it big, extra large. So now on typically on all the platform I check, when you start, when you open the app, there's usually like a splash screen. So splash screen is something like mm, let me open let me open. Let me paste something on the roof. What a typical splash screen is like. Okay, let me explain what the splash screen is like. Let me use Google. Let me screenshot some splash screen on my app. Okay, no, it's about to show me splash screen. Let me put the good side. Okay, I'm Okay, so let me just paste it on the book. Okay. So things like this is what we call splash screen. That screen that will show before you actually launch app. So it was an animation on the feed. So they have they had this splash screen. So we talk doing something like that on my platform. So I can click on one of all these this um dots when I over on my when I click on it, I can see all these dots. So I don't have to be drawing new line. Once I click on this, it gives me a new shape. Well, it's not a circle I need, I need another shape. So I'll put a square because square is a page or rectangle, any one I want. So I can decide to decrease the size. And I can call it splash screen. So now from splash screen, the next thing first, because I'm doing a sign up and login flow, right? So the next thing is to ask my user, do you have an account with us? If you have an account logged in, if you have an account to sign up, right? So that one is because it's a decision. What shape could that be? Can someone on this is Mike or a mic and tell me the next screen now? I'm gonna ask this user, are you do you have an account with us? What shape could that be? Let me follow me. These are all the shapes. I think I drew it somewhere. Yeah. Can someone say something before I proceed? What shape would that be? No, this is a thumbs up. What shape would that an be? An angle. Let's get. Let's get an angle. Angle. What's an angle? Like um. Okay. 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 Triangle, rather. Okay. It's a kite. It's this shape. It's a okay. kite. Kite or yeah, kite. Oh, uh, <clears throat> what did I what did I call it when you say I'm just calling this guy? Some people call it diamond. 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 Yeah, diamond. 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 So it's a decision. So I'm gonna go to next and change this one to a diamond. Oh, uh, where's diamond? This one, diamond. So I'll say I have an account because you have an account. Do you have an account? I'm gonna reduce this size a little extra large, looks large. Okay, maybe do something like this. You have an account, so you have two outcomes basically. If you have an account, I'm gonna click here. If you have an account, if you have an account, sorry, let me tell this to stop making that. All right. right. So, um, do you have an account with us? If your answer is yes, okay. One more thing you can do is on this line here. Once you double click, you can add like comments. So, if your answer is yes, for example, if your answer is yes, we log in. If your answer is no, I mean all the shortcuts of left and Figma, you can use the click jam. So I'm going to press my Alt key to duplicate this and just drag it down here. That's what I did. Or you can do the normal route and just come here, click here, and try to drag something, whatever way you want. I mean, I just duplicated it. So don't get confused. That's what I did. So do you have an account? No. You sign up. Sign up. So now to log in, 
what do you need? You put in all your details, enter details, enter details, um, enter details, uh, what could be next, after you enter details. So I, something that we have here, which is, are your details valid? Let's put it that we can put another this in here, another shape, because it's a decision, kind of. So when I click here and I make it a, so, uh, details valid, meaning have you confirmed everything you need to confirm? So we can have this here, are your details valid? The answer is yes, is a success. You've successfully created, if the answer is yes, if the answer is no. If the answer is yes, you remain error. Get an error message. Um, let me make this one and that shape back. And the only thing you can do is to go back. Is to go back to enter in the right, the right details. Don't get lost for don't get lost for me. Why if your this thing is correct, if your details is correct, you go straight to the product, which is like my dashboard. I can type dashboard. So meaning my details are correct, and this will be the end of the flow because I've completed my task. It's just for me to sign up. I've completed my task, so this will be the end of my flow. And this is a simple user flow. I can come here to sign up to. Um, I can also add forget password if I want to add forget password to details and everything. But I'm just trying to keep it simple for you to to sign up. I can continue that one too. I can click here and see enter details, all the details they ask for. Um, verify your email, verify email slash phone number. Okay, if it was a success, so okay, if it was a success, I'll put this on. Verify email, verified email with a question mark. So this is going to be a kite or be a diamond. Did you verify your email? It's a question. So if you did, you have something here. Two outcome, right? If you did be a success, you are logged in already. What did I put here? Get your dashboard. Error dashboard because you verified it. If you don't, you get an error message. Error message from this to a rectangle. And since you got an error message, the only step you can take is to go back and fill in the right system. So it's, all these flows are just saying you once the more you practice, the more you get better. And now that you're in your dashboard, you've got to the end of this flow again. So I can either just put a circle here or just drag this one. To this place to feel that okay we are done with the, the, the process so this is the start and this is the end of a simple sign up um sign up flow i can do the rest for browse menu subscribing to a new plan tracking your order based on the competitive analysis i've done i've checked out Lugo did their own okay i think i can do it this way i think i can do it that way i've checked out all the other platform okay tracking tracking your delivery how does jimmy i do and do tracking delivery how does, I mean, try direct and indirect competitors. Like, also that, okay, how does DHL track delivery and stuff like that? And you can use it to get an idea of how you do your own um, flow. So with this now, I kind of understand how my flow will go. So this is how you do user flow. Um, there is a, there's a video I sent to the group that might give you a brief more explanation. And there's an example, because there's come up with user flow for your product, one of the, um task exile to carry on your whatever product you are building so there is a video i sent where the guy was building a task flow for an e-commerce website so you can see how he's doing it and you can use that one for um as reference while you are doing your own all right so have i lost anyone so far i know it's a lot taken but have i lost anyone no 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 amanda have i lost you 
No. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so back to our slide. We're going to be talking about personas. So I'm supposed to share screen instead. Is there something else? All right, so now we're talking about personas. So now I was about saying. When you are doing your research, right, you already know your target users, right? You already know them, you've done your research, and you found out that, okay, uh, my target users are children between the ages of 7 to 12. They are my target users. I also found out that adults, too, can also use my products and all this stuff, right? So it's time for you to create a persona, which is basically a fictional character that represents your typical user or the user group of your product. That is what a persona is. You just pick one person, a fictional character that represents, based on the research you've carried out, like, okay, let me just get a fictional character to represent this user group, which is Mr. Michael. Mr. Michael is a young professional that works in Zenith Bank headquarters in VI. And because he's still on the mainland, because of the cost of rent in uh on the island he stays on the mainland he always wake up very very early to go to work right i mean he goes to work there's no time for him to start cooking picking tomatoes picking onions picking they want to slice potatoes to fry and all this thing like there's no time for that because you have to leave the home as early as five in order to beat terminal bridge traffic right and um, when he gets to work he's so tired when even when there's break so i mean you have to go to a layak restaurant a lie yeah you don't have Four thousand, you cannot buy food. If you have five thousand, you cannot buy food that you enjoy. Plus, I can't be eating rice every day. Rice, rice, rice. Like I mean, okay. What's my best bet? My best bet is to what? What? What is my? What is? What my? What are my pain points? Pain point is that I don't have time to cook. Um, I close very late. I get tired and all this kind of stuff, right? So he is just representing the user group, Mr. Wally, whatever I called him, doesn't exist. And then I just created him to represent my user group. You can see part of me putting my users at the front and center of my design. So Mr. Wally is representing those users I put at the front and center of my design. He's the one I'll be looking at, whatever I'm building. I said, oh my God. Okay, if I put this feature on this platform, does this solve Mr. Wally's problem? Right. I don't have to be thinking of the old user group. I'll just use uh, the persona to represent them. So this product I'm building, will Mr. Wally be able to, will Mr. Wally be willing to subscribe to this? Will Mr. Wally do this? Will Mr. Wally do that? That is what a persona is. So back to the slide. So personas are fictional characters created by a designer to represent a typical user of a product. So they usually represent a entire user group. They're just picking a fictional character that represents all of them. Now, persona to help you understand your user needs, their experience, their behaviors, their goals. Now, creating a persona can help you. Creating a persona can help you stay part of yourself, and it allows you to understand. I mean, I've said all this thing already without reading this slide. Like you creating a persona will not allow you using things. Don't be creating an assumption in your head that okay, this was happening, this was happening. You actually have to understand what is going on. And create a fictional character. So after you've done the user journey map, right? Um, you find similarities with all the people you've interviewed and everything. You just create one fictional character to represent them and find the average, create the story for the user. Uh, okay, Wale works in Zenith Bank headquarters and everything. It's a fictional character that you just use. Okay, so how do you do it? You you after your research, basically, you I send out this, I already explained all this stuff, right? You carry out, you find your questions, you send out a question, you collect your data, you segment them, you know what are what and what you should prioritize, right? Identify how many personas you need. You know, I spoke about and I'll give that example again, avatar, right? Obviously, because it's a cartoon or anime, whatever they call it, it was intended for children. But that doesn't mean that adults cannot enjoy it. As a matter of fact, I enjoy avatar, that's the bender, right? So you identify how many personas you'll be creating. I'll be creating a persona for children under the age of this to this I also create a persona for adults right because 
Then for my food app, I'll create a persona for busy professionals that go to VI. And I choose to create personas for lazy professionals, lazy people that have time, um, set goals that, I mean, they have, they're not going to work, but they can't, they can't imagine themselves being in the kitchen. Or let's say people that can't cook, sorry, because not only those that are busy, being, being busy is not the only reason why you cannot like prepare meal and everything. If you cannot cook too, if the only thing you have to do is boil water for coffee. I mean, and you don't have to be buying food all the time, like rice, rice, warm variety and everything. You can also use the platform. So you can also be part, as one of us said, I've made that I just keep it from my head now, that you can also be part of my user group and I'll create a person as to represent the group of people that cannot cook. Amanda says she can cook, so she doesn't belong to this group. I'm guessing me cannot cook. So my guess is me cannot cook and it belongs to Abi, can you cook? Your guess is wrong, bro. Ah, uh -uh. <laughs> ah, I'm a chef for the cook. Eh, uh, Idabasi. Ah, okay. Oh, for <laughs> <Well, laughs> Oh, I, I was thinking you do not cook. Anyways, so my group, <laughs> my second group would be those that cannot cook. I mean, if they try to cook Indomie now, the Indomie will turn to the soup and they all oh, say, God, I'm sorry for wasting this food. To be too soft, they throw it away. They try to cook spaghetti, right? They will cook salt and sprinkle spaghetti on the salt. They can't eat it again. And they're like, oh, instead of me wasting food and everything and offending God or whatever, right? Let me just wait for a subscription based model. And I mean, I can't be ordering junior food all the time. It's this, that. Sometimes, I mean, you get, sometimes it doesn't come early and whatever, whatever problem they might be facing. And I think I can use this platform. So this will be my two user group. I've identified my user group and it's time for me to you now create my fictional character to represent this user group. So, <clears throat> I don't like this design, right? It's too busy, but I just used it as an example to see this fictional character, right? I just got this picture online, so I'll be creating my own persona. It's the design I used to use for my persona. So this is this person, whatever the person name is, we put the person name. Okay. So this is the, this is whatever the personal name is. You put the name here, occupation, this is the occupation, the age group, um, location where the person is staying. If you want to put this, if you think you need it, um, about the person, give it a short story about the person, where the person, uh, the, the person's problem, the person's challenges, or the person, what would the person like to do, stuff like that. You have it here. Um, so now let me go back to, I'll use Figma to create, I won't use FigJam this time around. We probably can use FigJam because they pretty much work the same way, but I'll be using, uh, I'm using Figma. So I have this template, call it a template that I do use for my own persona because I would like to keep my design fine and everything. So hold on, let me open my Figma file. So, what is our class work? This is our class. Okay, I have this. Copy this. UX class. Let me create a new page. New page. I'm gonna paste this. So this was one persona I did a very long time ago. So I'm gonna create a persona now for my two user groups. So we have persona one. I'm gonna use a lady for persona one. Persona 
I'm going to need a picture for her to represent my persona. So let me use the plugin I use. Amanda was not in the class when we did plugin. I'm going to right click, go to plugin, use free pictures, come to get picture of the African lady. If I can type, because my lady, my, my user group, they are, they are Africans. So let me use this. Let me use some other business woman, Afro business woman. Take a weird suit. Okay, good. Let me look for someone that look like Nigerian. All these ones are looking like black Americans. Okay, let's use this anti. All right. So we have this anti. Hold on, it's loading. This design should not be hard for you guys to do now. Like, I mean, it's pretty much simple. Shape, everything. So if you are designing your persona, you can check online. I will show, I will share different them, different designs that you want to design for your personas and everything. So let it just load the image. It's taking forever. Let's walk. Check my internet speed. Because I'm using a 5G router. So my speed is fast enough. I have about wow, 300 mb per second, so it's fast enough. 400, so good, good. So my internet is fast enough. So if that image do not cooperate, let me pick another image. Plugin. Let me try on splash. On splash and that place where I can get picture. I use free pick and on splash basically all the time. Is the MTN still having issues with their network? What's oh, up? That's taking forever. But well, anyways, while picture is loading, let me forgive my personal name. I will call someone and I hear that sound again. Let me do that. All right, I'm a, uh, Amanda. Yes, I have a question. This okay. picture of James Brown, I can mm -hmm. start the, the writings are, how do we achieve this? Now that, that's the question I have. Like, how do we? How how is it possible? Is the picture on at the back of the of the right up or in front? All right. So let me design from scratch. Yes. Well, no, let me design from scratch. Okay. So I'm gonna do one frame for my picture. Do one frame for my picture. Let me try to make it pixel perfect. Let me do 10, 24 for height, 10, 24. Okay. Then I'm going to have another frame for, let me put in my text. Let me draw this text outside, all of them. Let me draw this text outside. This will be for my about, my passion. This will be his goals and this will be his pain point. Our last class we don't really out, so don't if we're not talking about understand the layout, but guys stay with me. Stay with me. Yeah, stay with me. Stay with me, yeah. All right. So this three now. I'm gonna add let me add this one to auto layout. Let me add this one to auto layout so I can have this background. Then I can add three of them to auto layout. You have to watch the class to understand this auto layout. Now I have these three set. For this one now, I have all these names here. It's basically text. So I'm going to type my personal name. Let me make this in black first. Right. See very well. Something like this. So let's say my personal name is. Joanna. Joanna. Michael. 
can I get the name of my persona? Let me increase the file size, font size to 64. What is she doing? She's a bank manager. Bank manager. Let me give this one font size to something smaller, maybe 32. Okay, so these two, I'll just add it to auto layout. I just put them together out to layout. I'll just, I'll just then that's how I achieve this text here. So I can drag it here. Um, then about let me duplicate this one to we have about but is slightly bigger, so I'm gonna make it maybe 40, make it maybe both. So about now we have age, all this one have icon. So do I have to waste time designing all these things? Um okay, let me just let me just let me do it fast. I can do it fast actually. Um so I'm gonna go to my plugin. I'm gonna go to my plugin, go to iconifier. I start from age. I can use cake to simplify bed cake. So I don't know what's wrong with MC and why these plugins are not looking. I don't even think it's having issues. I see it's loading, 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 loading. You want to say something? Yeah, I, I understand this part, but is the picture like where does it fall in, in this whole? design so okay so this picture now i'll put it inside this frame so okay. i'm gonna i'm gonna come here i'll right click to launch my plugin that is free pick and i'll say this afro business woman all right so i said let's use this antique and we find another auntie because that is not good at last time <laughs> If it, let me try morning. No. Let me change. Mm -hmm. Can I use it? Can I use business mind? All right. You can use Auntie Joanna. She looks like a Joanna. So let's just wait for it to look so you see what it's going to be like. So why I said I was gonna give you other other te templates because I did some things to make my text visible, which I'm going to now. Let me just wait for the image to load. I think MTN is still MTN is not back hundred percent. Okay, I think it's still gone. I gone. Yeah, all right. So, can you see now? You just entered the frame straight. Did you see that? Yeah, all right. So, now for me to make my text visible, I added a gradient here. So, for me to add gradient here, I see some here. I just click on this plus icon to add something on top of it. Right, so 100%. I want 100%. Uh, click on my gradient. I'll make it a gradient. So yeah, we have something like this. We reduce this. Let me try to do maybe some. Oh. And it seeds. Something like this, Sha. Okay. Let me reduce our name small. Let me use uh, to six. The auto layout, let me make sure the text are close to each other. Instead of 42, I'm going to use 24. I think 16 is okay. And um, yeah, so we have this as Antigrana name. So we have our about, okay, I think my icon should be able to load now. Plugins, Iconify. So first of all, we have H, which is kick. Kick, 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 kick. I want a bold icon. Let me use field icon. So I like this icon. I'm going to drag and drop this one here. 
Did someone raise If you raise your hand, just ask your question. Yeah, boss. Okay. Yeah, because of that, I think we understand the, the icon part of that. That's it. Okay. okay let me copy uh, this. So we understand that. So, okay. Amanda, if you have problems with it, you can let me know. I okay. can explain. Yeah, yeah, when you are trying to do it, you can just pause me. I'm always on. I work every day on Figma, so. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. All right. So this goes to everybody too. So for before uh, me, you start saying this thing. <laughs> uh -huh. So Mrs. Joanna is. I would be something because she's been 27. Yes, I'll give her that. She's not been in London because my product is in Lagos. So she's based in Lagos, Nigeria. She's a, oh, I think for a location two times. So let's just put it in. She's a bank manager at a very young age, good for a bank manager. Uh, the bachelor's degree that's what I want to put this here. She is female, or at least she identifies as female. Then she's single, so she's a young achiever. She's single, all right. So I have my persona. Then I cannot write stories here if I want to. Um, Joanna, Joanna is a energetic, is an energetic. Energetic bank manager that stays on the mainland due to the due to the due to the cost of by the way, tangibility is a very good resource to, to help you out with, with this. I can ask ChatGPT now to create a persona for me based on what I have paid it. So let me see what ChatGPT come up with me. So create a persona for me. Make a persona, a persona, be a bank manager named Joanna. And she stays in Lagos. Stays in Lagos. All right, let's see what I do to generate because I, I don't want to start typing everything one by one. I just want to copy and paste. Okay, good, good. I like what I do with brought for me. I will take a snapshot. Snapshot. Maybe we should make auntie 11 years older. So let's do that. Auntie, you are now 38 years old. Um, you are based in Lagos, Nigeria. Nigeria, a bank manager. Okay, let's make auntie married. Why are you married? I cannot cook. Okay, married. I know I have chef. Married, uh, income level. I mean, let's stick with this for now. So let's go to a, a something about uh. All right. So we have this. Joanna is a seasoned professional in the banking industry with over fifteen years. Ah, uh, she minus thirty-eight. That's twenty-three. Okay, she started a young achiever. Okay, with over thirteen years of experience. Uh huh. Okay, the 15 years of experience. She started her career as a customer of the company bank man. I Amanda. 
आए तो भी हेलो आए तो भी आई एम अंडर आई थिंक हेलो या आई वाज ऑन दिन देन फाइन थैंक्स आई वाज यस इट वाज फाइन आल्सो तो बी व्हाट अप तो बी I think his network is probably bad. Yes, yes, yes. Very, 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 very. Mm. I think it's his network. Yeah. That's how to be to miss the class yesterday. Um, on, no, no. on Wednesday. No, no. Due to the network, you could not finish the class on Wednesday. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Abin, yeah, Abin. Yeah. I don't know what is happening. But I, I, saw, I saw the video, I saw the video we posted on so Swap. Uh, at least, it, at least you you will you can understand some of the mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. So it's fine. Shall let's just let's just hold on for maybe in the, for five minutes. Yeah. And, uh, and then we'll be back. Yeah. Maybe two have left. I'm still here to like eleven. My, I'm trying to be back. Mm, I'm still here. All right, now let's wait for Kush to Hello, Toby. Hi, Toby. I'm with you. How far now? Good boy. How are you, Toby? How are you pushing it? And then I would like to. I'm crying my best to work as a business before. Thank you. So so far so good. How many people have responded? I'm not gonna lie. I've got to talk to twenty. I have to share to my colleagues that work just to. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. But I, I, I feel your salvation. Oh, you did. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Uh, I really I, appreciate. I did. Now, the real person to the group. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. So, I did. so we are waiting for Amada to put his to post his own survey.